Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, this is the Be Better Golf YouTube channel, obviously, because it's right there. And uh, this is Monty Shinebloom. He's at youtube.com slash hit along, but you can just find him on montyshinebloom.com. If you're here, that probably means that you should have seen, or you should go, stop watching this video right now and go to the video that is all about the no turn and cast drill that we did that's in this link right here, which had some uh, super dramatic uh, before and afters. Basically, I went from that to that in 30 minutes and uh, it, it shows you a perfect way how you can do it yourself now we are three and a half months removed from that and um, a lot of people are, are wondering a few kind of putting it all together bringing it to the golf course so uh, Monty I guess a good place to start would be uh, let's check out what I'm up to now right well I watched you warming up yeah and what I saw is you were going a little deep mm -hmm. uh, the divots are over there but yes. you were going a little deep deep divots okay yep. and what was happening was is this is kind of one of those chicken or the eggs you can either say that you got your arms trailing because you were getting in front of it or your arms were trailing a little bit and then you got in front of it to intuitively to, 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 to get back to get the ball there. so you know we got you out of firing the hips early and leaving the arms behind okay but you still have a little of that wanting to like cover the ball and trap the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then your right arm gets a little bit behind you and then you have to pull your hands out and steepen the shaft a little bit. And then, you know, you dig it. Steepen the shaft. Pull my hands out and see it so the so, your hands go so, this so, way. So go, go that way a little bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Your, your, your body goes this way. Mm -hmm. Then you kind of work that way a little bit. Yeah. The, the hands will work out and steepen the shaft just a little bit. And then, you know, you kind of got to hold on to it to keep it from, you know, getting too far left. Yeah, and look what is presented when you do yeah, that. Yeah, the L comes out. Right, right. So, what you need to do is you need to feel like, the simplest way to look at it is you want the elbow and shoulder working forward while the head stays back. You know, people are always concerned that, you know, well, you know, if I have tilt away from the ball and... I don't get my head forward, I'm going to have that reverse C finish, yeah. okay? It's the exact opposite. When you keep your head behind the ball and your chest behind the ball, as you get the right elbow and shoulder forward, that pulls you out of the reverse C finish. Yeah. Whereas when you get forward like this, okay, then you have to drop the right shoulder and then that's when you get yourself in a, a position where you're hurting your back. Yeah. So keeping your head back allows you to rotate more this way and still be from the inside and shout. I'm just trying, just because I'm trying to be clear, you're saying when your head goes forward, in order to get back to the ball, you have to go like Correct. this. If you keep your head back, you can stay much more right. Up. And then, and then when you, when the right shoulder and elbow are working forward, it brings you up into this neutral position. Right. Whereas if you work forward and drop the right mm -hmm. shoulder, yeah, that hurts that's, already. Yeah. See, I'm putting you, you know, I'm putting stress on your lower back and your hips. What you don't want is too much forward drift. Okay. Yeah. You can have a yeah. little bit. Driver, not so much. But what's like, you know, you got a seven iron there. A little bit. It's not recommended. But what, because what your body will do is is you'll drift a little bit forward and then you'll notice all the guys that drift forward a little bit they'll tend to back out of it as they're coming into impact pick a target here so what you're looking for is this stays back better mm -hmm. and this gets forward more and we're looking for a shallower the, your ball flights were fine <laughs> yeah but you were just too steep okay Pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad. My divot's nice looking. N nice. Yeah. It started right in front of the ball, just like it's supposed to. Um, the release was a little bit late. Yeah. But I'm nitpicking. Yeah. As far as nitpicking goes, uh, a lot of people still are are always commenting that they're hitting the ball dead solid doing the the same drill that fixed me. And just because it fixed me doesn't mean it's going to fix everybody else or anybody else. But uh, a lot of people are having these pulls. Pulls. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dead solid pulls. Yeah. Right. 
and that is a result that is nearly always a result of the head moving forward. Okay. Because once your head moves forward, you point your rotation left. Yeah. Okay. So if you can, if you guys can see this in the camera. Yeah. Okay. So if I rotate and I keep the head back, I'm coming from the inside. Okay. But if I rotate. And to exaggerate the point, just to illustrate it easier, if I get my head forward and rotate around, look at how far left I'm pointing. Yeah. You know, look at how up and out my right shoulder is. So essentially, yeah. the more you get your spine forward, the more you're tilting your rotation to the left. The hula hoop is here. Yeah. Okay. So the bottom of the hula hoop would be pointing that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you move the hula hoop this way. Now all of a sudden the bottom of the hula hoop is pointed over there. Yeah. So and that's what you're doing when you're moving. See, look. Here's. It's it's this is an oversimplification. Yeah. But let's say, for the sake of argument, that the bottom of the arc is the ground. It, yeah. It's not. It's below that. Yeah. And the, the and you're bottoming out at the bottom point of the hoop. Yeah. It's not true, but to simplify, we'll say yes. So let's say the bottom of the hoop is pointed right where I'm supposed to hit it. Mm -hmm. Watch what happens when I start tilting my spine. See, if I'm behind the ball more, look where it is. Yeah. If I'm in front of the ball more, look where it is. Okay. All of that was a gross oversimplification, but for the sake of discussion and making people better, it's absolutely how it needs to be understood. Just trying to convince you to keep your head from right. going towards the target. Right. Right. Okay, that, see, to me, for yeah. you and what your issues are, I would prefer that bottom groover that goes right on target than the, you know, the dig the swimming pool. Yeah, that's 15 there was, yards I short. Mean, yeah. You know, people go, ah, I hit that one thin and grumble, grumble, grumble. Yeah. I didn't compress that at all. Well, you did. Yeah. You just hit it one groove low on the club face. And you know, if you look out there, that ball landed in the exact same place as the solid one. I did the classic uh, golf student thing where I was over the ball, going, "What am I supposed to do? I don't know. Let me just hit it." <laughs> right. So. Well, you know what? Yeah. There's something to that. Yeah. You know, when you get out on the golf course, you need to be. Ah, eh, I'm gonna hit it that way over yeah. there somewhere. Yeah. On the golf course, you should do that. Yeah. The range is for the head back, elbow right. forward. You head know? back, elbow forward. Awesome. That was great. Yeah. The one thing I do want to ask you, Monty, because uh, having my swing on the internet with this channel and everything and watching a lot of rounds, uh, everyone, all, all the amateur teachers on YouTube, um, of which I'm one, of course, they are all super concerned that I'm taking it away inside and at, what is this, P2, yeah. that I'm very inside. And you've never mentioned that to me, and a lot of people are saying, why does it matter to fix that? I think on purpose. It's not ideal. Yeah. Okay. But you have to prioritize. Yeah. All right. If you were out of position, really out of position at the top, you know, and I'm not gonna lie, a little more vertical wrist set yeah. and a little less rolling wrist set yeah. wouldn't hurt. But at this point, there are, you know, I don't like saying fix these 17 things. Yeah. Okay. And I try and, and then you know the the counter argument would be well, Monty. You should always fix what happens first, which I'm a big believer in. What happens first in the swing, like right. as far as takeaway. Right, yeah, right. right. And, but, but as an instructor, I have to make value judgments. And I'm saying, okay, you know, for you to fix that rolling motion that gets a couple little behind you, it would take X amount of work. Right. And you're only going to get 10% of the benefit from that much work. Yes, that's not quite right, but plenty of players have played well from there, and it's not causing anything significant later in the, that's right. the judgment. Right. You know, is it causing something yeah. significant that later in the swing? Effect. Okay, so that's that's where I have to make the judgments. So as far as taking it to the course, we're gonna play a hole right here real quick with me. One driver, one iron. Okay. Unless I hit it really bad, then one driver and one wood. <laughs> <laughs> So, probably even more crucial for the driver not to get your head forward. Like I said, with a wedge, with a short iron, I, I used to be very adamant about no forward head movement. 
and I still am, but I've seen people kind of get away with a lip, like an inch. Yeah. Okay. A, but with driver, forget it. As yeah. soon as your head moves an inch that way, you start getting your arms and club out of position. All right. So I'm just imagining a hole that I always play at home. So same thing. My right elbow forward and my head back. Absolutely. That was killed. Yeah. I loved it. Oh, <laughs> it was a great yeah, right. shot. But it was very low. It's, yeah. Okay? It was low because you were a little bit steep. Okay. And you were a little bit steep because you got your head just a little bit forward. It wasn't significant. Like, you still, it wasn't, the, here's where, again, you have to place judgments on things. Did it cause you to hit a bad shot? No. But that yeah. ball's too low. Yeah. yeah. You know? And that's what caused it. You got a little bit steep because you got a little bit forward and the ball took off low. Okay, now I'm going for this red flag out there. Or well, sort of, but that low. Okay. That'd be uh, chipping from the left. Good strike, yeah. but a pull. Yeah. It was what we talked about before, when the head gets a little yeah. forward, you point your, you tend to point yourself more left, and that drive that was a little bit low, it wasn't left of left, but it was a slight pull. Yeah. So as soon as that head starts moving forward, you start pointing yourself too far left. So just to wrap it up here, because I know people love drills, including me. What's the number one drill, the number one kind of homework assignment drill you give to somebody that is getting okay. ahead of the ball? I actually have this on YouTube. It's gotcha. called, uh, if you want to do a search for it, it's called excess head movement. Okay. Just If you do excess head movement. It's here in the link. Yeah. If you do excess head movement, Monty, it'll yeah. it'll come up. Okay. Now tell me when you can barely see that got that loss. Can you still see it? Mm -hmm. Barely or you can see it? I can point? still see it. How about I can barely see it. Okay. Now, if you move your head even an inch, you will lose sight of the line on that range ball. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, so make sure you can see it when, when you make impact. Okay, you kept your head back, hit it dead straight, the drill did its job. Cool, so uh, find Monty Shinebloom at montysheinbloom.com. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Awesome. That was cool.